Hello and welcome to Liquid Courage Talks. This is our follow-up segment on business strategy to help you plan for life after COVID-19 outbreak. Uh, in our last segment, we shared an overview of our signature restaurant facts that is our uh, model for helping evaluate businesses and develop new business strategy. And we uh, pair that up with a SWOT analysis as well to help um, with um, a very visual form of planning. So right now I'm going to start off with just even talking about a SWOT analysis, which most people are very familiar with. Um, it's basically a strategic planning technique that, like I said, is very visual. So you could use a whiteboard, a spreadsheet, um, uh, cards, anything that helps you visualize your, your planning and be able to, to strategically plan your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities and your threats. Now, one thing I do like to do is put it on something that you can revisit later. So maybe take a picture, take a copy of the board, keep uh, note cards, whatever it is, make sure that you can go back and revisit them later. And so uh, when talking about strengths, you can start a column that talks about the strengths of your, uh, your business. And that's where you want to put everything from like your location could be a great uh, strength. You know, it could be a unique concept. It can have um, the build out or the cost of your business venture it could be a strength. Um, maybe you have a loyal following. Um, all those things you wanna put in one column and maybe revisit or add more things later about what the strength of your businesses are. The next part of the SWOT analysis is your weaknesses. So under that column, you really wanna spend time looking at the weak points of your business. And I know sometimes this could be hard when developing a a business plan or wanting to say that there's anything negative, but these are the things you really want to identify so that you can uh, tackle and find solutions for. So it could be a bad location, maybe lack of uh, parking, maybe you lack expertise in some cert certain area of the business, or maybe you have some funding issues that you need to uh, address. Um, and you know, there are risks to every concept, so you want to make sure that you put those in there. The next part of the SWOT analysis is um, looking into the opportunities that this business venture develops. So it could be everything as simple as your return on investment. That's a great opportunity. Uh, the customer demand. Maybe your na neighborhood has never seen a, a craft cocktail bar and that's a customer demand there. Um, you also want to look at opportunities for future growth and maybe even opportunities to collaborate within the neighborhood. Um, things of that sort. So anything that you think is going to um, be an opportunity once your business venture has started, you want to put into this column. And last but not least, the T in SWOT analysis is the uh, threats to your business. And these things, um, as we have seen with COVID-19, could be everything from like the economy crashing. You know, those are things you can't really foresee for foresee, but things that you definitely want to try to plan for or develop um, an emergency plan for. Um, it could be the competition in your neighborhood. Um, it could be local loss or restrictions on the type of business that you're looking to do. And even as simple things as your parking and your, your, your marketing strategy. You know, if you have to explain your concept to everybody, it might be hard to get them to buy into your concept. And so those are the basics of a SWOT analysis. You want to make sure you're able to put those in a very visual manner and be able to go back and revisit from time to time. As far as our restaurant facts, which is our Liquid Courage um, consulting signature model, um, in the last segment, we really explain how our restaurant facts are adapted from a military five paragraph order. Those of you guys who aren't familiar with the five paragraph order, it is uh, the military's way of strategizing and developing uh, a plan for execution. And so uh, as a former Marine, I know it as a SMEAC. SMEAC stands for Situation, Mission, Execution, Admin and Logistics, and Command and Signal. And it's just a, a really kind of fancy way in the military for us to develop a plan and really address the who, what, when, where, how, and why of a mission. And before you're able 
to go on a mission, you definitely need to outline what's going to happen and what you expect. And just to reiterate, just because you come up with a plan, it doesn't mean that's exactly what's going to happen or that needs to be followed to a T. It's just basically coming up with a strategy to be able to execute what you're trying to accomplish. Things could change. You might need to adapt and overcome. And as we said in the military as well, no plan survives first contact. So it's important for you guys at this point, especially right now during uh, the outbreak of COVID-19, to really set down a plan that you can revisit and change later. So as far as the acronym for Liquid Courage, we, um, we use the acronym FACTS to basically um, develop a restaurant culture, be able to define the focus of your business and uh, your service model. So um, FACTS is a five paragraph order that has been designed uh, for easy application to hospitality and restaurant concepts. And it doesn't just apply for restaurants, it could be for nightclubs, it could be for cafes, bakeries. The, the, the focus is to be able to strategize here. So FACTS, the F starts for focus. And this is a very simple terms, who, what, and why. So you wanna detail the overall purpose of your venture in a very simple way. You should be able to, to describe this to somebody passing by on the street. So in simple terms, it's, I wanna create a neighborhood bar to bring the community together. Um, you can go into a little bit of detail about who, who I am, what we're trying to accomplish, but the main goal is to keep it simple. So it can be some like showcasing a specific type of cuisine or culture, or even uh, filling a specific need. Like I said, maybe your town has never seen a video bar and you're trying to implement that for the first time. So um, the next part of the acronym FACTS is the approach. So what approach are you gonna take? How are you planning to get the desired results? This is the, uh, the part where you get to really detail out your unique approach, your idea. And it can be the type of business that you're looking to do. Maybe nobody's ever done a Mexican bakery in your town before. Um, you, always want, you also want to look at uh, your service style. Is it going to be counter service? Is it going to be um, fine dining? Uh, right now, we're seeing a lot of people who are thriving during this pandemic because they did a drive through or they're able to do um, a home delivery type of service or they, had, they were set up to be able to go online and order there. So all these things you want to really look into, into your service type and business type. Um, other things like how unique your concept is, you want to detail out in this section. Uh, what kind of customers you're looking to build a base from and uh, how you're going to market to them. And also um, where your funding is coming from. How are you going to attain that desired result with a certain budget, you know? Um, the next part is conduct. And when I say conduct, I mean that more as in what is it going to take to drive this business venture? If you're a train conductor, what is it going to take for you to be able to drive that train, right? So um, this is the part where I really like to deep dive into what is your business culture and how is it going to operate from day to day? You know, these are things like, are you owner operated or are you gonna have a management team? You know, I see a lot of times, uh, especially as consultants where I get hired by an owner of a restaurant, but he actually has no uh, operations part in the restaurant. So those are important things. You also wanna detail out, you know, things like if, you're, if you need a executive chef versus a cook, what your staff needs are gonna be, uh, equipment needs, you know, do you need a hood? Do you need uh, how many fryers, uh, what kind of, uh, equipment do you need to do the type of service that you're looking to offer? Uh, what are your hours of operations? Um, again, like who is your customer base and how do you reach them? You know, is there local requirements you have to follow? You know, here in Oregon, we have to, if you're serving booths, you got to serve food at the same time. And depending on the time of day or your business, how much food or how many substantial items you provide uh, depends on the type of business model that you developed. Um, and also like when it comes to how unique your concept is, w what kind of collaborations are involved, um, you know, the events that you're trying to do, is it going to take live music? Is it going to take, um, you know, having some food being made off site? So 
um, the, now you get into the technicalities parts of it, the, the T and the FACTS acronym. And by technicalities, now you're getting an even deeper dive into not just the what is it going to take, but the who is responsible and who is accountable for the details of your business. Uh, this is the hardest part I always uh, have when I go into new businesses or businesses that are already existing because um, it, most people never go into details of who is doing what part of the business. So this is the part where you set up your leadership structure, where you say, what is the ownership role versus the management roles? Uh, if you have multiple owners, what are they responsible for? What kind of perks do they have? And what kind of say do they have in your business? You know, if you um, are gonna have section leads, like kitchen uh, managers, bar managers, front of house managers, what are their roles and what is the uh, leadership structure? Who is above who and who listens to what? Or are they all collaborating together? You know, um, other things like accounting, HR, and admin work. All those three things are very different. So you can't just say, oh, that one person is taking care of HR. But that does that include also printing out menus or, you know, um, doing things like balancing your books you know most of the time one thing i find is that having a third person or a third party do this that doesn't have to be daily related to your business works really well so um you also want to talk about who's in charge of maintenance needs if some breaks down is the ownership going to be the first person you call are they going to come in and fix it themselves or are they going to hire somebody you know when it comes to marketing i also see people who put a blanket statement on marketing but um, PR, public relation tasks are very different from social media. And building content is also very different than just managing a social media platform. So are you going to have a photographer? You know, are you going to hire a website uh, developer? Or are you going to have somebody that kind of responds to Yelp ads and, uh, and questions and comments? So um, deciding on which person is the right person to deal with each of these parts is very important. Um, you also want to, uh, like I said, look at your unique concept and talk about the type of events that you will have. You know, if you're going to have music, are you going to have somebody that's in charge of booking that, uh, that music and setting them up? And, you know, if you're just having reservations, then who's taking reservations and who's managing when they, can, when they come in? Is it your host or is it somebody during the day that's going to be doing that separately? And then, um, you know, there's also the creative development or creative direction of it like um, are you responsible for the creative development of your your business culture or is the chef deciding on menus is the bar manager creating the drinks um, who is doing the ordering for those those items you know also um, on a day-to-day -day operation who is responsible for opening closing and all those kind of tasks whenever somebody in your in your uh, leadership structure isn't available and then uh, you even want to get down to the details of like who's responsible for the cleanup, for the locking up, for turning off lights, and um, who's responsible for maintaining your culture, training your staff, making sure you check up on morale, and those kind of things. And last but not least, in our acronym FACTS, the S stands for sustainability. Once you develop your plan and your strategy for your business, how are you going to sustain that business? Where do you go from there? Once you've opened the doors, how do you maintain your business and look for growth, opportunities for growth, right? So um, this is where I really think that a communication strategy is very important. This is where you want to decide whether you're going to have monthly or weekly leadership meetings, um, whether you're going to have a daily stand-up uh, with your staff, or maybe just put out a, a daily brief, which is something I like doing myself. Um, if you're gonna have all of your uh, important information into a shared docs document, or if you're gonna go old school and print out a, a staff manual that they could um, reference back to every day, um, what kind of apps are you gonna be using to communicate with your staff, whether it's uh, you know managing your schedules with an app like Homebase, whether you're using a task management app like Trello, Evernote, and also um, a lot of uh, POS systems now are able to manage those kind of things and give you uh, your daily um, sales goals and those kind of things. So um, 
those are the things that you really want to plan in this section. And also look at how you're going to continue to train your staff and how you're going to maintain their morale. A lot of people don't think about this before they open a business or as part of their business strategy, but keeping your staff engaged, keeping them learning and keeping them happy is very important to the success of your business. So that's where you want to decide who's going to be in charge of setting up training manuals, who's going to develop opportunities for growth, whether you're sending them to seminars or holding them yourself in house. And um, how often are you going to be doing team building opportunities and, um, you know, appreciation days or giving them incentives to have the most sales or learn the most about your, your concept itself. Um, and then beyond that is really having a plan for growth. You know, is, is your dream goal to just have one venue be the best venue in the world or retire off of this, this business? Or is it to open up two or three or four? Or, um, so this is the part where you really get to decide when, how you're going to budget. Are your budgets weekly, monthly? You know, how, you're gonna, how often and how you're going to plan your, your P&Ls, your profit and loss statements? And then how much savings do you want to put for rainy days and emergencies? You know, um, this situation with COVID-19 has really brought to light a lot of weaknesses in our uh, restaurant industry. And it's something that now I think go, moving forward, we're going to have to really plan for. Plan for how the customers are going to react, um, how we need to go back and reevaluate our systems and uh, maybe overhaul our whole business strategy altogether. So once again, um, our signature business model is called FACTS, Restaurant FACTS. And it stands for focus, approach, conduct, technicalities, and sustainability. And, um, you know, I always say uh, confidence is key. And as much as you want to plan, uh, there's no substitute for experience. So just make sure that when you develop this plan, you put it on paper, you get other people who are professionals in the industry to take a look at it. To They might be able to see something that you haven't seen. And um, if you have any questions and concerns, you could always reach out to us. You can follow us at liquidcourageconsulting.com. We're also on Instagram and Facebook under Liquid Courage Consulting. And you can reach me directly at joe at joefriday.com. And I will do my best to help you. So stay tuned for more seminars and more content coming from Liquid Courage Talks. Be safe and stay confident.